Hi, do you like the idea of something like the Horngen? And are you considering how to get one yourself? In this video, I'll show you how to assemble a Horngen and what's needed to do so. Actually, I will try to demonstrate how I did it in as much detail as possible so that you can easily replicate it as well. Which components are necessary? First and foremost, you will need an impact tool. Secondly, you will need an air compressor, which will be used to pressurize the horns. Such compressors typically come in 12 and 24 volts. I decided to use a 12 volt compressor. Next, we need the horns themselves. I chose to order them in red because I think their appearance better suits this tool and together they should look really stylish. You'll also need a tube to connect the compressor to the horns. Trigger button. In fact, I have a separate trigger button and I decided to use it. You can use the button that comes with the tool, but I decided to take another one because sometimes, some tools have brushless motors and the button won't work without a control board. Electric wires will be needed to connect the electric motor. Electrical terminals are also necessary. With their help, we'll connect the power to the motor. Steel bolts will be used to attach the horns to the housing. They will be secured approximately like this. What tools are I going to use? An impact wrench will be required. A Torx 10 bit. A 3 16 inch diameter drill bit is necessary. Wire stripping pliers. To tighten the bolts, you can use either a 10mm wrench or a socket wrench with a 10mm socket head, depending on what's readily available. I'll also be using various pliers for working inside the housing. And finally, a soldering iron will also be needed. So, let's begin. First and foremost, we should disassemble the housing. Afterward, you need to remove the motor and all the internals. To be honest, of all the things you can find inside, you'll only need the electrical connector. Next, assemble the housing with two or three screws. This will help hold it together to drill the horn mounting holes. Now, let's determine the exact placement for the holes. At this step, I recommend not rushing and carefully inspecting whether the horns are positioned correctly before drilling the holes. Making a mistake at this stage can be tricky to fix, but I'm confident that you'll do it even better than I did. I'm drilling the holes. Doing it by hand isn't the most convenient way, but I don't have specialized clamps. If you have them, I recommend using them. Now, let's disassemble the housing again. You can now fit the compressor and the other new elements inside the housing for a test fit. As I mentioned earlier, out of all the internals, we will only need the electrical connector. Let's disconnect it. Before I start soldering the wires, I need to remove some technical components inside the housing to ensure that my new button fits well inside. But if you're using the original button, you can skip this step. Additionally, you need to remove some things inside the housing to allow for the new wires to be rooted. I believe you'll easily understand what exactly needs to be removed. Check if everything fits well inside the closed housing. It's time to turn on the soldering iron and finally assemble the internals together. The red wire is the positive polarity contact. We will later connect it directly to the compressor.
The black wire serves as the negative polarity contact. This wire will first be connected to the button and then to the compressor. This way, our horn will sound when the trigger button is pressed and held. Also, electrical connectors are installed on each wire, which are directly connected to the compressor. To complete the electrical part, you should connect the terminals to the compressor connectors. You should connect the positive contact to the red wire. And to the negative contact, connect the black wire. Inside, everything is completed. Let's begin assembling the housing. After assembling the housing for the first time, I realized that the compressor wasn't securely fastened. It had some side-to-side -side movement. So, I decided to add a sealant between the housing and the compressor. For this purpose, I had a regular door sealant like this. This kind of fixation is significantly better. Not bad. All that's left is to connect the horn to the housing. I'm using bolts for this. I measure the required length of the tube and connect the compressor's output to the horn. Almost done. I'm screwing the red horns in place. Now it's all set, let's test the sound. Hmm, I definitely like this. To be completely honest, this is my first DIY video. I really hope it will be useful to someone and help save time. I would be grateful for your support in the form of a like. I will leave links below the video where I purchased the necessary components. Enjoy and good luck!